he probably looks at it like this isn't a big deal or something to talk about. And I'm like, of course, this is something that should have been talked about. So it was us on two different pages trying to like navigate that with the pressure of the time frame that was left. Welcome back to another episode of Reality Nightcap, Love is Blind edition. This week, we have Stacy here, going to break down the episodes eight through nine and give us a little tease to that wedding episode. So welcome, Stacy. First things first, how has it been watching back? Because your love story with Izzy is unfolding in front of millions of people. Uh, it's, it's a lot, um, but it's been really exciting. It's also been like a gift to to see that it's like a really cool scrapbook <laughs> that is cool like you can always just turn on Netflix and watch it all again I don't know if I will but <laughs> <laughs> yes I could I could you're like maybe not maybe <laughs> not maybe that's not gonna happen we need to talk about episodes eight and nine I can't believe we're already on episodes eight and nine but okay. we first start it's 13 days until the wedding and you guys are at the reunion party a lot happens at the reunion mm -hmm. party first, so much happens but we see that Uche obviously had that conversation with Lydia and then he had the conversation with Milton and then he goes back to the cast and mm -hmm. basically tries to tell you guys all these claims about Lydia and you weren't having it why right. did you feel like you needed to defend Lydia in that situation there were a few reasons um I'm close with Lydia I was close with her then I don't necessarily think it's appropriate for someone to be creating such accusations without the person even sitting there to check them or defend themselves. And honestly, no one but those two are ever going to know what really happened. So I didn't see the point in campaigning it to everybody. And I think most of us were closer with Lydia than Uche. Anyways, it just seemed off. I didn't see the point. And I just didn't like that Lydia wasn't even there to address it. And defend herself. I love when Miriam stood up and went off on him of all people Miriam is so polite and put together like I would imagine etiquette as the word next to this woman she is amazing and when she said something I was like the world is turning in a different direction at this point um but she had a lot to say and I think she had every right to say something in that moment based on the tone that he was using with her. And then it kind of switched from allegations about Lydia to allegations about Miriam. And I don't know about anyone else sitting there, but for me, I'm like, what is the beef here? I didn't even know that Miriam and Uche had beef. So I'm like, what is happening? What is happening? I know. I'm so glad that she did stand up for herself in that moment too, because it's like, yeah, he started throwing things back at her and she's like, look, this, I got my degree from John Hopkins. I live all yes, she does. Go off, sis. Yeah. I hated, I hated that. Go Miriam. Go <laughs> Miriam. I, I was proud, but I never thought I'd hear her voice at an octave like that ever. So it was so shocking. Funny. Well, yeah. good for her then. But the yeah. drama continues yeah. throughout this reunion party, mm. including we have Izzy talking with Chris. Mm -hmm. And he basically is just driving home that why he thinks Johnny is super sketchy. Then you and Johnny get in the mix with it. I was trying to get away from the outside situation. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for Izzy. He was inside. I had no idea what he was talking to Chris about until I'm like, what are y'all talking about? And they said, Johnny. And I was like, great. I just left the drama. I just left to get out of the drama. Now I'm walking into it. I wanted nothing to do with the drama at all. And I didn't even know what they, like, I heard what they were talking about, but I don't know. Like, I wasn't on that side with the men. That was their thing to deal with. That's a question for Izzy as far as why he felt that need to talk about it. But I'm pretty certain it walks into clearly what was already an existing ongoing conversation. Right. And the vibe I got when I walked up, it was more like Chris was asking Izzy for insight on that relationship because it seemed like every piece of information that came out from Izzy to Chris was shocking to Chris and it was true so I think he was confiding in Izzy like wait does this girl really care for me is she just saying that because if she's saying it to you who else is she saying it to to and I think that's what that conversation was and I had no part of it I was just sitting there 
And that's when Johnny kind of came in and was like, why are your hands in his face? And I'm like, I have nothing to do with this, I'm trying to keep my cool. And then she just comes in with a allegation that I'm deceitful. And then it's like, okay, well, let's go there. But as far as I was concerned, walking into it, it was just a question mark. And then like a, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> why? <laughs> You're like, why? Well, am I involved? Yeah. Pretty why much. am I here? You did say that you also think Johnny is sketchy and also a piece of S word. Do you still think that? I don't trust her for several reasons. There's just a lot of things that don't make sense. Like saying one thing, doing another, or saying two completely different things, being one way to my face, being another behind my back. I'm sure there's several words that could describe that behavior. Hmm. Um, I don't surround myself with people that give me that vibe. And I, if I had the choice, I wouldn't have been at that barbecue. <laughs> but that's just how the cookie crumbles. It's yes. just, hey, this is all going to happen. And you do the best that you can with it. But I don't think anyone would put themselves in a position where it's like, that's not my cup of tea. Why don't we all sit together and rehash drama and see what happens? Like, right. Oh, you go. <laughs> well, so, how at the reunion? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Buckle up. I'm going to take a helmet. That, yeah, that's going to be real interesting. And then you go back home with Izzy and you guys had an argument. What were you feeling in that moment? I was just over everything revolving around things that weren't just me and him you look at the time frame of this whole experiment and it's a pressure cooker we're mm -hmm. I, all that's in my mind is i'm going to possibly marry this person in two weeks i don't still know enough i don't know if i'll ever know enough about him to make a certain decision being in this environment probably doesn't help because it's just toxic all the way around it was very much like i wanted to move past whatever happened in the pods, whatever anyone else is doing. And so that's where the frustration came from. When we came back from the barbecue, I didn't want to talk about what happened there. It's like, let's just start over. So the fact that that was kind of like the ongoing topic of conversation, whether, whether it was about Johnny or Chris or Johnny and Chris or Aaliyah or Lydia, I was just over it. And I was exhausted and we were drinking. That's where my mind was is like, let's talk about the things that matter with us and marriage and what's happening. Are we yeah, moving you're, forward? Are at we that moving point, forward? you're 13 days until the wedding. You're like, I don't need to be talking about other people. We need yeah. to be focusing on ourselves, which then you guys did make up at the Pilates studio the next day. And then you meet his mom. Mm -hmm. And she seemed kind of at the beginning, like unsure about you. But then towards the end, you won her over. How were you expecting her to be like that? So we had talked to her when we first landed from Mexico. Like our parents were the first people that we had called. And she's amazing. She's such a sweet, warm woman. But I liked that she had apprehension. I think any parent should have a little bit of pause. And you know your kids better than anyone. And my parents were like, what? So it almost made me feel safer that she has the best interest for her child. Like, is this real? I need to know. I need to be convinced. Um, so that was very real of her, but she is so sweet, so warm, so genuine. Um, I had no problem with her asking the questions that she wanted to ask. And she clearly loves her son. So I really loved getting to see that because it, it always shows a different side of someone when you see them with either their family or closest friends. So I really loved getting to see that relationship firsthand. No, it was super sweet. And I think people understood Izzy more after that. Sure. So then sure. the next episode, we're just moving along. There's so much to talk about. You get your wedding dress yes. and that must have been such a special feeling. Thank How you. were you feeling in that moment? Were you still nervous about everything? You're like, oh my God, am I gonna... I, can't I was nervous. It's just, you don't know what you're doing until you do it. So it's like, what is me? Like, I've never looked at something so huge on my body. It's, it, it does make everything more real. This is happening. This is happening soon. 
And I was really trying to envision like, what does this look like with him? Like, what is he like? What would he think I'm, I would be wearing as a bride? There were so many things going through my head. And I honestly just kind of left it in the associate's hand. I was like, I am X, Y, Z, as far as personality, bring it in. And it's like finding a man, you put something on and you're like, absolutely not. And it might've been what I thought I liked, but it's not. And then when you find the one, it's like done. Yeah. Done. yeah. You have that feeling where you're like, okay, I'm just going to go with this. This is it. Yeah. Um, And then, okay, so after the wedding dresses, you guys have this very bachelor-like date. When I was watching it, I'm like, wait, are are we on The Bachelor or is this love is blind still? (laughs) It was amazing. That date, I wasn't expecting that. I don't know if I was expecting anything, but I wasn't expecting that. I thought we were just taking a tour. And then when they told us we were going to fly in a plane, I was like, I mean, is this safe? That thing, that's literally from World War II. So, wow. Like, so cool and such a cool story to be able to tell people that you got to do something like that with someone that you're in love with like so hard to top but like so cool so it was so sweet but then the next day you guys had some you had a very serious conversation that I know as a viewer I'm like wait where is this coming from so how did he bring that up because I think we saw on the show that it was like, you guys talked about it and then the camera started rolling and then you kind of had to talk about it again. Right. So, so when did you bring that up? It was something that was ongoing. Um, I had just bought my house a few months beforehand. So before all this started, I had a therapist and I had a lawyer just to be able to know, like someone guide me like in therapy we're going to get married. Like, what do we do? What do we talk about? And she was like, communication and finances are the two reasons people get divorced. And I'm like, communication, we're good. She's like, finances, you need to pull out every bank statement, every credit card. You need to highlight what you spend over X on and you trade with your partner so that once you're married, none of this is a surprise. It shouldn't be something that tears you guys apart because you know everything behind the scenes. You see it come up when he comes to my house for the first time. And I think we had talked about the gender roles in a marriage and on that topic. And since nothing was ever elaborated on, it was that whole, like, we're going to pull out our bank statements. We're going to talk about how much we make. We're going to talk about our goals for the future financially and career wise. And I told him at that dinner, I think we had a conversation, like, what's your hesitation? If you have any, I'm like, we still haven't covered that. And the wedding, I think, was two days away. And so when we left that date, that's when that came out. It was not just the credit. It was a lot of things that I was surprised by that I think that he he probably looked at it like this isn't a big deal or something to talk about. And I'm like, of course, this is something that should have been talked about. So it was us on two different pages trying to like navigate that with the pressure of the time frame that was left. At that point, it's less than 48 hours until your wedding. Yeah. Did that give you, oh my gosh, wait, this is, it's going too fast. Like we need to pump the brakes a little bit. Yes, it did. And then it was like, do I even know this person? It's like, is he lying or did he really just not think that was important? And for that, you need time to process. Like you, you can't make a deci- I can't make a decision like that. And it's just so much like, is this who I think it is that I fell in love with? And this was an honest mistake and he didn't know any better. Or is there more that is still going to come out that I'm going to find out later that is shocking to me that wasn't a big deal, I guess. I want to ask you so many questions, but I'm like, I can't because we still have one more episode. So we're going to have to wait and see how it all plays out. I do want your opinion on the Milton Lydia argument that we saw in the last episode. I, it's like, is this Lydia Uche thing going to be an ongoing issue in the relationship? I have the same question. I think that Lydia and Milton, and you kind of hear it and see it, how they handle conflict so differently. 
Right. That I think when you start that far apart on how you handle situations, it takes you longer to get in the middle. That's what I was saying. Cause I feel like they always come out of it with a resolution. I'm not sure why. I don't even remember why that came up, but I think that with all of the fingers that were pointed at Lydia, as far as like, what are her intentions? I think it's just a trigger for her, especially from the person that's supposed to be like her confidant, her biggest cheerleader, which he did an amazing job at doing that in every other scenario. I think that they were probably exhausted. The pressure is on there in that same time frame. weddings around the corner. So I think it was just a trigger in that one subject, like you go there, it's going to take me a while to come back down. Um, but I don't know when I watch them, I don't, it it looks explosive, but to me, I'm like, I don't think it's that bad. Like they'll get over it. They're just going to talk it through. They're just talking it through. I do. I always forget he's 24. There's moments where I'm like, oh my God, he's so, he's so young. But then in other moments, I'm like, he's so mature. Yes. I love him. The voice of reason. It's like all of us hooligans. And then Milton. And it's Milton. <laughs> it's still on the same parallel. I'm like, that's my mind. I was like, I'm not computing that, but okay. That makes you just write it down in your notepad for later. <laughs> that is so funny. Okay. Before I let you go one word to describe the last episode, it's the wedding episode. What would that one word be? Um, wow or bananas <laughs> wow or bananas okay both work I what? only get one I don't get more than that but it's wow <laughs> wow okay and then we can throw in bananas too wow and then a little bananas 